Minister, again, I want to welcome the increase, substantial increase in funding, and to, to, we realise it will be put to very good use through direct programmes and also through your assistance to the various NGOs and through uh, other international organisations as well. And uh, on behalf of the committee, I take the opportunity to thank the many Irish people, indeed their international colleagues as well, who are working in some of the most difficult uh, situations in the world. And we have given some of the practitioners, be it nurses, doctors, or other um, workers who have been literally out working in those in, in those crisis hit, hit areas, we've given them the opportunity to make presentations at this committee. But I think it's important that we record our appreciation of their work in very difficult and dangerous places as well. Minister, I attended a, 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 con or a seminar last Thursday night in the Athlone Institute of Technology on climate action and the need for climate action. And it was organised by my colleagues, deputies Eugene Murphy, um, Robert Troy and Barry Cowan. Just at that discussion, it was a very well attended meeting, people of all age groups. I made the point that due to the great empathy the Irish people have shown with the poorest in the world over the, over the, over the centuries now, going back to our own history of, of famine and poverty and hunger, that maybe if we, in the whole debate about climate change and the need for climate action and the need to protect the environment, if we were able to tie in a better message to our own people that the, the biggest victims of climate change are the poorest people in the world, that maybe it would help to create a greater awareness among all of us that we all need to be doing more and that it would be to benefit the poorest people and the regions that are hardest hit as well. So maybe we, if there was somebody who worked on about trying to tie in that awareness in a better way, I, I think it could resonate with the public as well. And I just made the point last week at that meeting in that own institute that we had just seen days previously the huge devastation in Mozambique, Malawi and also in Zimbabwe, and particularly the Beira region in, in Mozambique as well, the huge loss of life and literally areas wiped out. And I remember when we visited Mozambique and Malawi as well, it was forcefully brought home to us in regard to, to, to rising water levels and, and their insecure future as well. So maybe if, if there was a determination some way to get the message across that here are the people who are, who are going to continue to be the biggest victims in the world and continue to be kept in poverty because of climate change. And um, one, one area, and I appreciate your, your kind and generous remarks regarding the report that we drew up as a committee as well. We focused on a number of particular areas, the whole area of gender equality and the need to ensure that we keep um, women and girls in education as well. During our trip to Malawi, and I remember when we were out meeting the, the, the ag agronomists who were, who were teaching persons the skills in growing potatoes and managing crops and that, I remember one of the, 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 the officers said to us there, our ambition is to get the women to come to the classes and the school, because they will listen and they'll pass on that knowledge as well. So it emphasised to me the importance of ensuring that, that girls and women got, got that educational opportunity. And one other issue, we had Jerry, Professor Jerry Boyle, uh, Director General of Chagas here with us, and you know, they, they are playing a role in the whole area of knowledge transfer and that. Is there further progress being made in ensuring that the private sector would be more generous in participating in programmes in the developing countries, maybe ensuring that some of their relatively young retired staff will put their skills, experience and knowledge to good use in those countries, maybe over a short period of time. And of course, many of those big Irish international corporations today, they have the capacity to spend money in those countries and relatively small money in their terms would, as we all know, would do so much in in those developing countries. But I think the whole area of knowledge transfer and that interchangeability, I think it could bring so much benefit at very little cost to the exchequer and would do so much good, and obviously on the whole development side as well.